Hi guys, I hope you're doing very good. Um, what you have in the following slides is an example of how to apply different priority rules to one particular case, to a certain job shop example. It's, it's the one that we saw in a, in a previous video. And the data for this job shop problem is what you can see in this slide. Basically, we've got five jobs and each of these numbers um, denotes some information about these jobs, okay? And the notation we use is, is down here. The first number is the job. So here we, all the first numbers are ones because it's job one. Then the second number is the task sequence. So this is the first task, second task, third task. And the last number is the machine where that task should be undertaken. And the number in, in between brackets is the processing time for each task, okay? And here, down here, you also have the due dates for each job. So this, all, all that you can see in this slide defines a, a job shop problem. And what, we're, what we recommend you do is to apply different priority rules to this job shop problem so you fully understand what how each of the priority rules works and to do that what you can use is this template because you would you will have to do the Gantt chart of, of the scheduling and um, you can you can what we're going to give you in the next slides is the the due date for each job the completion time once you have applied a certain priority rule, the earliness of each job and the tardiness of, of each job. And then you, we're also going to give you the average completion time, the minimum completion time, the maximum completion time, the average earliness times the number of early uh, jobs, the average tardiness times the number of, of tardy jobs, and the number of early jobs and the num number of, of tardy jobs. So this is um, what you should try to do, if you like, for each priority rule. And here you've got the solutions for, for a random uh, solution. Um, one solution that, uh, well, one priority rule, sorry, that uses linear programming, the shortest processing time and solving ties with FIFO, the longest processing time and solving ties with FIFO, and the earliest due date um, priority rule, again, solving time ties using FIFO, and the critical ratio and the total slack, okay? So these are in total seven different priority rules, and each of them uh, will give us a different result. This is the summary of the results we have obtained. And well, first of all, what, what you should clearly understand is that these results are by no means general. They depend on each particular case. And the only reason we show them here is so you can see that different priority rules give different results. In this particular case, it seems like linear programming obtains the best result in, in Mexpan, as, as you can see here, but it's not as good um, in other um, performance measures. Shortest processing time obtains good results in in number of jobs in time because basically we're not uh, delivering any job late and earliest, earliest due date gives good results in earlierness. So we've got a lot of, a lot of jobs that have finished early, but has one job that has been delayed that is tardy okay but again these are not general results by by any means so and the difference uh, the differences that we can see in this example are small because the example is small but in general these difference these differences can be very large in in real environments earliest due date priority rule and FIFO are very popular 
mainly because they're extremely easy to apply. So in workshops that do not use any support decision system, these are rules that are often used. Shortest process in time is, is an interesting priority rule because basically it, it increases the workload of the next machines, okay? By processing the jobs that take the shortest to process, we are basically processing many jobs very quickly and by doing that we allow the next machines to to work so so we're increasing the workload of the next machines and in general reducing idle times in commercial software packages uh, total slack and critical ratio are are priority rules that are often used because because they usually give good results in, in a high range of efficiency measures, and but, but they're not that easy to apply. And that is why they're used only in workshops that use commercial software packages. And to conclude this video, uh, we would like to emphasize that the two performance measures that are most often used are the mix pan, which is how long it takes to complete all the jobs and, and that is very common in firms that are able to set delivery dates to their clients that have that market power, if you like. And, and in those that do not have that market power and where due dates are imposed by the client, then usually the performance measure that you want to optimize is related to, to the due dates and it relates to, to fulfilling your, to, to meeting your deadlines, basically. Okay, I'll, I'll see you in the next video.